I've got an idea where if it works, this will not only save me time, money, but also allow me to offer more things in my business. I want to see if I can use a DTF transfer to burn a screen printing screen. I printed this DTF transfer on our 24 inch oddly DTF printer, and this is something I've been dying to figure out. Let's see if it works together in this video. Quick little introduction lesson for those of you who don't know. This is a screen printing transparency. It is a negative of the design that you actually want to screen print. As you can tell, it's printed on this kind of like clear-ish uh, matte film. And the big thing about this is that the design is 100% completely black. You cannot see through any parts of the design. And that's going to allow the UV light not to pass through and actually give us that perfect stencil that we are looking for in our screen. Here is the DTF transfer that we printed off on the DTF printer. As you can see on the back, we did print our full white underbase. So it does have a white underbase, but the actual color layer of ink is all black. So I'm interested to see how all of these factors are going to play into each other, but I think the only way to find out is to just do it. So let's give it a try. Okay, I got my screen all set up here, ready to go. And I have the DTF transfer. Now the DTF transfer, as you can see, is printed flipped which is exactly what we need for our artwork to burn it onto the screen. We want to print it flipped so that when we actually wash out the stencil and print the heat transfer, it is also going to be flipped on the transfer paper for that customer. We are printing heat transfers on here. We're not printing t-shirts. If we were just printing normal t-shirts, we wouldn't have to flip the artwork and that would be something we can all manage in Digital Factory when printing the actual DTF transfer. So let's go ahead and get it all set up here. We are going to be doing this in reverse. So we're just gonna line it up onto the screen, just like normal, as if it was just a standard, regular transparency. And then we are going to get this guy taped down onto the screen so that we can burn it and see if this is going to work or if this is going to be a colossal failure. All right, got the design all on the screen. Everything looks normal as if it were going to be just a standard transparency. So I think the only thing left to do is get this guy thrown into our exposure unit and see if it exposes. Now, at the beginning of this video, I said that this is going to be something that can save us money and allow us to offer a, another service that we currently don't offer. Now I wanted to go a little bit more into that for what exactly I meant by that and um, what we can expect to come from this. So the thing is with our standard transparencies, these come in a max size of 13 inches wide. And it also just so happens that the printer we have, the Epson 8950, I think it is, also only prints media up to 13 inches wide. So I think a couple of you guys might be able to see where I'm going with this, but our DTF printers can print anything up to 22 inches wide. So if this does end up working, we would be able to use a lot more of these automatic size screens than we currently are. As you can see, there's still a lot of leftover space. Our sheets come in 15 inch sizes, so we would be more than able to accommodate larger designs on our transfer sheets. It's just that we haven't had the width available to us in the media or the printer format. So having something like this DTF transfer that can print all the way up to 22 inches wide, while we might not ever actually use it that wide, it would allow us to bring it up to a max of like 14.5, almost 15 inches wide. A pretty big difference between where we are currently at now. All right, so I got the screen all set up in here. I'm just going to take my block out foam, put that in there. And now we can close up the exposure unit. And I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna do the same time that we normally would for a standard transparency. I think that that's being the most fair and I think that's going to set me up the most for success. So that was a 110 mesh screen. So we are going to do this for 36 seconds according to my little countdown. This timer is started, 36 seconds, let's go. All right, 30 seconds are up, 36 seconds. Let's go ahead and take off the DTF transfer. And now everything should be exposed. All we have to do is rinse out the emulsion that has not hardened. And then, guys, 
we're going to see if this worked. We're going to see if we can use DTF transfers to burn screen printing screens. Let's go. Let's see. All right. First things first, I am, I'm not sure if it's going to show up to you guys, but I can see the design is burned into the screen. Now let's just see how well it worked and the detail that we got from it, I guess. I mean, All right, guys, from what it looks like here, I think I'm definitely gonna wanna do a test print, but just from like my initial impressions, looking at it through the light, guys, I think we got it. I think this is gonna work. I'm just gonna rinse it out a little bit more. It kind of seems like it doesn't wanna rinse out as easily as the standard transparency. I'm just gonna give it a little bit more water and see if we can get everything picture perfect. All right, guys, here we go. The screen is done. I'm going to go wash it out with the air compressor. Not wash it, I guess dry it out with the air compressor. And then we'll give it a little bit of time to finish drying. Throw this up on the press and see what we got. I can't believe we've gotten this far, to be honest. All right, guys, got all of the water out of the screen. We're just gonna give this a little bit longer to finish drying. And then we'll be able to do our test, see if this actually worked. When I was drying out the screen, I was taking a close look at it. And to be honest, guys, I didn't see any problems. Everything looked like picture perfect. So I have high hopes for this. I'm pretty excited. It's really cool that this just, it freaking worked, man. All right, guys, I got the screen all ready to go. And I got our extra long sheets. Now you guys are gonna have to bear with me here because this is not set up for these large of prints at all. Um, the squeegee is only set to go back this far, which is like right on the edge of the design. And the actual uh, adhesive tack that we have on the palette to keep the transfer paper down also doesn't go nearly that high for 19, 18 inch designs. So you guys are gonna have to bear with me on this. We might have um, not perfect adhesion on the top and bottom and we're just gonna have to run this and see what we got. Let's give it a try. All right, I think I got everything figured out with the paper and the alignment. I'm gonna bring the screen down and then I'm gonna go flood hold up and turn the auto on. So now we're gonna flood the screen with ink. And here we go, guys. First try using a DTF transfer to burn a screen printing screen. Is it going to work? If you guys haven't already, Put down below in the comments what you guys think. Is this going to work? Are we going to have a successful print or is this not going to work? And we'll have to see what we got going on. I think we already have a problem down here and that's not very good. I'm gonna have to switch out the paper. All right guys, that one was a disaster. I think it was my fault from when I had the screen going up into the um, flood position. So we got another piece of paper down there. We're going to give this another shot. Here we go. Second round. Can you use a DTF transfer to burn a screen printing screen? And guys, from the look of that, I think we're in good shape. Let's pull it out. Take a look. All right, guys, I can barely fit it all on the frame because it's so large, but there we go. A extra extra large print and we burned this using a DTF transfer. Let's go ahead and get ourselves some close-ups here so we can really check the detail. I already looked at this and I was pretty impressed. I noticed a slight issue right here um, and that's just it was some pretty fine lines and unfortunately, it doesn't appear that we were able to get that to come out using the DTF transfer. I was able to get it out using just a normal transparency because we did print this design already for a customer using a transparency. So I know that I was able to get that out. So that is something that has to do with the DTF transfer, unfortunately. But looking through literally almost every other part of the design, things look really good. Like, I'm, I'm pretty impressed that this was able to work so so well for 
Like, like look at this. This is this is crisp lines. I really wasn't expecting to be able to get such crisp lines from the DTF transfer because like it's got the powder on it, you know? I was thinking that I might have to do it without applying any powder and maybe even without applying any white. I was just gonna try doing black. But to be honest, that worked pretty well with just that one slight error. And to be honest, I can't even completely rule out that it wasn't my fault when I was washing out the screen. It's entirely possible that I could have just not washed it out properly and the DTF transfer would have gotten that out. But anyways, guys, I hope that answers that question. For those of you who were wondering, I know that I sure was for a long time. Um, so I don't know how I'm going to use this yet, but it's just really something nice that we can have in the back of our pocket in case something like this does come up in the future. A client wants an extra wide print. Um, we're gonna be able to finally accommodate that. Before we would have to turn them away so we can only do up to 13 inches wide, but now that limitation is gone and we do not have to worry about it. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you did enjoy it, please comment whether you thought we were going to make it, and if not, what you think that we could do to better uh, burn the screen when we're actually using a DTF transfer. Uh, but until then, guys, if you haven't already, subscribe down below, leave the video a like to help out the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you guys in the next video.